All right. So my name is Keelene and I am of Loving Life with Light, up here, and uh, Universal Astrology uh, dot live as well. So I haven't done an update like this in a while. Um, I usually do these pretty on impromptu. Two, I am working my way back into uh, Universal Astrology updates. Um, that's kind of a personal calling, um, really. So I'm not necessarily trying to make any money or anything for doing it. It's just one of my passions. Um, I got into looking at the charts and I've been kind of waiting for a good time to jump back in since the solar activity has been uh, not the most exciting. Um, definitely have had its moments, but a couple months ago it was much more exciting. And now that the sun has turned in, uh, we'll take a look at that too. And it's, it's much more exciting now, uh, the last couple of days. And I do think that some of these alignments uh, that we're going to see in the charts today are definitely affecting some things globally. Um, if we look at the chart here, I'm going to make myself smaller and make the chart bigger here. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of major, major alignments going on right now. Um, the most important one is probably the Earth, Mars, uh, Venus, Pluto situation. Um, here in Capricorn. So Earth, Mars, Venus, Pluto are all stationed at the tail end here, or the, the beginning of Capricorn energy. And when we go into solar system scope where we can see the 3D view of this, um, we'll see how perfect of an alignment this is. I mean, the degrees are today 030302. Zero, zero, this is a, a near, a darn right perfect alignment. That energy is extremely strong and relevant now and we can remember that mars is, uh, rules over things like war <laughs> um, and willpower and venus is always being chased around by mars in in the orbit and so when they meet up this is a very powerful moment it speaks really heavily uh for the masculine and feminine um the polarization process so um emotions are in and, and uh, relationships are usually coming in or out of alignment at this time and so there can be some either coming together of that energy merging appropriately or if it's not a division um so that's really strong right now as uh, Venus will be passing up Mars in this process as it moves faster in the orbit. Lining up with Pluto, Pluto is the power structure here and we need to remember that what's going on, these global kind of conflicts um, that are happening in the pandemic. When the pandemic aligned, there was a major conjunction with that. Um, Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto were aligned for a major, major outer conjunction. So Pluto is still carrying around that energy. It is very slow moving and is very far out there but has a very big impact on things so this meetup with mars and venus um says a lot for that um saturn isn't is is over here lined up with mercury and then if we go over a little bit farther we have another major conjunction which is the earth sun and then jupiter and we'll see in the sky how the sun is blocking us out from uh, neptune and jupiter Jupiter energies. So that's a major alignment as well. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system and it has a very large magnetic electric effect on all the other planets around it, anything it's passing up and anything. So it is on the opposite side of the sun. So whatever it's over there near is, is having huge impacts. Um, but we're separated from that. We don't have, we are experiencing a lack of an opposition of the Jupiter, Jupiter energy. It's, it's not giving to us. It's giving to the other side. We are, we're, earth is on the other side of it. So we'll see that in a second. Um, so let's, let's go over to that 3d form of things and check, check it out. I'm going to turn astrographs off um, and I will leave up the sun activity in the background as we talk. This is solar system scope and great, amazing, amazing program. So this is what we're looking at 3D today, March 4th. And this is that alignment I'm talking about. Earth, Venus, Mars, and then Pluto. And look at how perfect that is. It is, it is absolutely amazing. If we go to a more realistic 
uh, view, um, and they all turn into dots here, we can see it even better. That this is just, they are all, they are all lined up. Um, just, just, ah, it's perfect. Um, and we can go over here too, to the Earth, Sun, Jupiter. And also we can note that it's lining up with NK uh, as well. Okay, uh, this is a comet that's making its way in to our orbit. So like I said, Jupiter has a very strong magnetic electric effects. So uh, this comet coming in um, is definitely feeling Jupiter, if you know what I mean. I'm going to go back up to a more realistic uh, view so that we can see better. Um, we can see that uh, this Earth, Sun, whoops, I just changed the time on us. Uh, the Earth is completely blocked from any view of Jupiter. The connection that we have to Jupiter right now is through, through the Sun. It's, uh, magnetic things. And we're also pretty caught off from the Neptune energy, which is holding uh, very strongly to the Aquarian energy. Um, so anyone spiritually inclined, um, you know, I, I feel that Neptune is very much holding the energy of the Aquarius 5G energies. Anything kind of coming in and out of that is either going to be negatively or um, positively affected by that. Anything that's positively affected is going to be in alignment with that is going to benefit. But anything that's um, you know, ne we'll also remember that Neptune is really associated with things like mysteries and psychology and um, the subconscious and these things. So anything that's not in full alignment with the Aquarian kind of 5G energy uh, isn't <laughs> isn't for it. It's very much you're, you're we're all feeling a lot of resistance um, in the world. And so that's that's confounding um, for anything else that's kind of touching or moving through any kind of association with Neptune energy. And I would say that Ju Ju Jupiter and Neptune are very much the closest to this. So it's unfortunate that we're on the other side of those issues. Um, we are very much on the other side of those issues. We are not necessarily in or close to the 5G or the 5D energy while we're over here. Earth is experiencing a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos, um, and even war. So that's, for me as an astrologer, to be expected with this kind of energy. Um, I can also say, you know, from a from an astrological perspective, you know, about this kind of global global conflict conflicts. When when is this? bound to see some change when are we bound to to start to see through some of this stuff um we can start to see through it march 20th around but really um until we're apart from this pluto energy and really separated from it even by the 20th these mars and venus are still not apart from each other. There's still uh, situational things happening. And the next alignment that we're going to have is with Saturn. So there's the restrictions are going to come to a head when Saturn is going to try and find order out of all this chaos. Um, Saturn is the overall ruler of this entire chart and this entire situation in the last three or four years. So it's going to be up to the crunch time on this when decisions are going to be made. Um, is going to be around the beginning of April, around the 12th, on, on the 2nd. And that's going to take some time. Uh, it's not really going to come out of it, out of the energy of this mess um, for a while. And we won't see any fruitful, anything fruitful from this until about a week later when we have an alignment with Earth Jupiter and Neptune. That's where we might see some overall hope for the light coming into the situation, having some kind of truth 
um, be found out or some understanding. Um, Jupiter is really the one that holds a lot of that, those keys to the happiness. He's the, the grandfather in the sky who likes to give out candy to those who are doing r a really good job in life. Um, but is also that grandfather in the sky that has absolutely no problem with kicking your ass out the door if you have not done your job. In other words, he is keeper of the reward system of the galaxy, kind of. And so this conflict is still going to be ongoing until April. Throughout the month, it's, it's going to have a lot, of, a lot of jazz to it. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I can, can see uh, these issues bringing up. Um, and about June, so summertime, we're going to be having a, a Venus, almost Mercury, Venus, Uranus kind of energy. So at this time, I would assume because um, of Uranus, we'll see changes in big tech, internet, um, and some of those kinds of effects come into play further. So in June, I would expect to see something happen big with big tech, AI, satellites, that kind of energy, the space program, um, these kinds of things are going to be talk, being talked about. Um, whereas Mars is still very much in the middle of, of all of it, but it's not making any perfect alignments anywhere, which means that at this, by this point, the breakup of, of things that are going on in, uh, in Europe right now are going to be much more uh, bejumbled than it is right now. Um, right now, the focus is very much on these th on the issue uh, beginnings of this situation that began. So right now, there's a very, very much. I mean, one, two, three, four out of the spheres are very all <laughs> very much involved in this. Four out of nine is a pretty high number to be involved in a situation. So where we see this all kind of come apart is after these couple of alignments with Saturn and then um, with Jupiter and then a couple of months later with Uranus. So that's the kind of um, alignments that were the power alignments that we're going to be looking for is not towards just in March, but throughout the next couple of months. Um, I'm not going to take the time right now to go in to see what kind of star alignments those are going to be, but that will get We'll get more detailed in this as we go along. Yes, Charlie. Can you like put some of my dance classes? After I'm done? Can ten minutes? Some of my dance classes, please. Uh, in ten minutes, okay? No. I don't have the time to right now because I'm recording. So can you please wait five minutes? I'm almost done. For one time. You can do it on your tablet. Okay. But I don't have dance classes on my tablet. Please don't cry, Charlie. It's okay. But we don't have dance classes on the phone or on the tablet. I do on my phone. Dance classes? You mean my dance classes on your phone? Okay. Which one do you want? Those are, like, I think those are yours, I think. They're just new ones that you haven't seen before. There we go. No, not that one. I don't I want it. Charlie, I don't have time for this. Hurry up. Pick one. Do you want that one? Check it out? No? Not that one. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. I wish that I could pause, but I don't know why I can't pause and restart my computer uh, a couple weeks ago. So, I'll have that fixed eventually where I can pause. Um, when she comes up, but I can't do that right now. So, um, as far as other, um, updates of things, I want to look at the sun. All right. So this is the recording from today from Soto and I love this oh, there's so much to see on today's um, today's video 
uh, if we really really can get close in some of these areas here this 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 area is very active. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sunspots here that just I can see with my naked eye without looking at any of the data. And there's even more coming in. Now, th these these are very magnetized areas. If you if you know anything about the sun, which I would I hope that you get to know the sun better by watching. Um, people like Tamitha and Scove, uh, Ben Davidson, uh, to name a few that really, really helped me to understand the sun so I can talk about it more openly when I see this kinds of stuff. Um, and I can tell you that some of these, these, this black area is a, a corona hole right near this. We can really see looping one connecting to the other. And this is the positive and negative outlets, um, connecting and, and realigning, reconfiguring kind of like a slinky reorganizing itself inside there, pulling um, matter in and out um, and when those loops come up and they get way out and extended they can break off when they break off that can be uh, a, C a form of CME and it is usually associated with a flash a huge flare of light when that loop disconnects and uh, those flares of light can be really powerful and cause a lot of radio flux and all these kinds of things where our radio and our internet signals can be interrupted. So on the, all those bad days where it just never seems like the internet is working right, um, it's to do with the, sol the sun activity. Uh, every time that sh technology is wonky, it's, it's due to the sun. So uh, look at this down here, uh, this, this little bubbling uh, stuff here just forming a lot of different uh, kind of chaotic I think what this is is one of the loops so we're just seeing it from a different angle so we can see it instead of it looking like this pretty flowy stuff it's just look at, at all that matter that matter forming that solar storm there is bigger than our earth our entire earth so it is absolutely beautiful to study, study the sun and it, there is very much a lot of activity going on it's very cool to be watching and seeing what the sun is is doing the last uh, day or two it's just beautiful so if we can look we can look at uh and see if there's any uh cmes or anything that we can we can mention there was one on the second and we've seen that clip uh, several different poofs uh so the predicted shock arrival time is going to be on the sixth that's two days from now if we can get that uh, oh, I'm just not gonna we'll go over to Enlil and see what it looks like so there will okay uh, see on the fourth we're at a th KP index three so on the sixth we'll see that go be much higher let's see what Enlil has to show us from t the first to second third it says fourth fifth sixth okay so we're in some some high radio velocity s stuff uh, now and that's we're coming out of that by the fifth and this new spray this new select section of uh, yellow and orange and red that's going to be probably that uh, CME that we the, that's on the board here I'd imagine and okay so very very late on the 5th and early on the 6th the last CME arrival that we had was on 219 so a little bit ago a couple weeks Uh, I always like to look at this because it's it's uh, moved over uh, quickly. <laughs> so um, this is just today, right? The last twenty four hours, I think it is. So we're we're having a lot of activity now. It when the sun is much much less active, we don't have 
this much activity going on in this usually. So the fact that it's still flickering even when there's no inbound CMEs and stuff is probably due to all the different uh, solar activity that we are seeing, all the different sunspots, flares, and um, little things that we got going on. Uh, and the last thing that we can check on before these kinds of CMEs and, and stuff happen, hit us, is is the Schumann. That's not what we want. We want, we want, we want the Schumann. Okay, here we go. Four hours ago. Uh, looking for Schumann, Schumann resonance. I usually have a, a this pre pre brought up, but I didn't today. So I just want to show that on the third, um, which should probably be about the second <laughs> in my time, um, we did have a, a high signature found. Um, it looks like we have some missing data on this strip for today, um, at, at least the last couple of hours. And I do expect to see either on the 5th, 6th, 7th, or 8th another spike like this from the really large spikes of activity that we are seeing from the sun. And I do think that it's likely that, you know, the sun correlates to the activity levels of the human systems. So if we were to see something um, extreme or out of the ordinary or um, very lively happen on the globe, I would imagine that that probably would happen on the 6th. But I'm not talking in terms of something that would be um, unlike astrology that can be used as a tool to see into the future for good or bad purposes. Um, the solar activity is something that we don't have the ability to predict. So it's much more interesting to concern ourselves with the reactions that human have to the activity of the planets and the, and the sun. Again, with tools like astrology, we can see into the future and we can use that energy for good or bad purposes spiritually. But we can't do that with the sun. So it's, it's much more impactful to see um, through things like the Schumann resonance, how we react and what we do with that energy and what are those level energies actually are. The Schumann resonance connects to the extremely low frequency fields of Earth. And it has to do with electrical charges and um, protons and things coming in to our atmosphere from the sun, solar particles coming into us and feeding into the life force of this planet. And the planet reacts and because we all also are connected to this extremely low frequency field and we actually rely upon it. This is one of the weird things about um, going out into space is astronauts are so um, attuned to the energies, this low frequency of the planet that they actually are different. It's different for them um, when they leave the planet. It's, it's, it's different. There's a part of them that isn't gets disconnected from it and with you living on an, a, a breathing planet your your whole existence, uh, it messes with people. So there is something to say with the fact that we are all connected, it, it minimally at least through quantum entanglement, because of the Big Bang, we're all part of the same stardust, but also from the point of an electrical connection through the, the planet itself. So when it when the planet experiences this high energy from the sun through something like a CME touching its energy field and the, uh, those particles come in through the polar vortexes into our atmosphere, into the core of earth and through it, through the vortex that it really, that it really is, that gets to us. It's not like a shock, like it smacks us in the face, but it's, it's a, it's a process in which we are part of that energy system. And so these, big bunches of energy that show up through the 
the, the sun hitting earth and then the earth responding we can see that through the schumann resonance and we can feel it even if we don't know what we're feeling and that's that's kind of where i struggled most of my life is like what are these energy changes that i'm i know that i'm feeling um until it was the last couple of years i had no idea what those energy uh, changes and shifts that i was feeling um so i think there's some false blame for what we're going through being wrongly associated with certain energies uh so i want to help try and clear that up like what is it that you're feeling and being affected by what's your mind and thought and dra the everyday drama what's the difference between things like planned corruption uh, using these systems of, of um, order and secrecy and ritual i mean astrology has been demonized for a really long time and i i do understand why it's a powerful system so to kind of wrap this up today there's a lot of energy coming in um and a lot of strong alignments coming up through march and april we'll have a little bit of pauses everything kind of comes back comes apart before june so that's kind of my overall update um i can get into more detail if i have the time to do more regular episodes i wanted to come out at the end and say um i'm not going to be doing regular recorded episodes like this um in a huge focus because again i'm a stay-at-home mom i this this is a project a very serious hobby of mine um that might end up turning into something more but right now i just i'm mostly doing it for myself and also the recorded nature of this um it's a day-by-day -day thing so if i don't do any updates i don't have anything to fall back on but if i do small little updates then even my myself or my own records can go back and look at my site universal astrology live and see the kind of progression of issues um so i haven't been doing that in the last year and i'm kind of kicking myself for it i've been a little out of the loop so i'm gonna be doing it just for myself and i want you guys to be able to follow along with me so you can visit me at my website uh, universalastrology.live to follow the astrology uh, reports on a monthly basis and to see these episodes of when they're uploaded. But if you want to catch me on a daily basis, um, the best place to do that is Telegram. So I do I do have a Telegram that's that's very much just for daily simple uh, updates on the astrology, and I will upload the pictures versions of things that I'm that I show you today. Uh, for your for your own records and and things. Ah, so thank you for joining me for this episode of Universal Astrology. I'll see you probably later this month, I imagine, at some point. And uh, all right, bye. <laughs>